Hey, what's up, YouTube? Today we're in Esther 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Persia is the world power at this time. From uh, King Cyrus, who released the Jews out of Babylon. Then you have Darius. Then Xerxes, where we are with Queen Esther. And then there's Artaxerxes, who was in Ezra and Nehemiah's time. Backing up, in Xerxes, King Xerxes couldn't sleep one night. So he had his attendants read his own history log. And what he came up with, they heard the story of Mordecai, who we talked about yesterday. Mordecai was uh, Esther's cousin who raised her. And he stopped an assassination plot for King Xerxes. And he asked the assistants, hey, what did we do about this? And they responded, nothing up to this point. Uh, at the same time, this guy Haman shows up, who's a bad dude. He is. Um, he shows up, and King Xerxes says, "Hey, Haman, what should I do uh, to show honor to a man that truly pleases the king?" And Haman, of course, thought he was talking about Haman. And Haman thought about it, and he said, "Well, give him a royal robe." And let him ride the king's horse with the the royal emblem on it, and then have the a great official lead him through the court square, announcing and shouting, "This is what the king does for someone he wants to honor," thinking Haman would be that person. And King Xerxes goes, "Great, Haman, you do it. You be in charge of it. Don't leave anything out, and do this for Mordecai." Who was Haman's enemy? All right. Excellent. Do everything. Don't leave anything out. And then, so Haman had to do it. And he went home dejected. He told his wife. Somebody else told him, well, you'll never get back on Mordecai now. At that very moment, the eunuchs show up. And they whisk him away to the banquet, the second round banquet, with Esther and King Xerxes. Xerxes. Haman, and Esther are there. Esther's invited them to a, a banquet the second night of it. And Xerxes is, is saying, hey, what do, you, what do you want? What do you what are you asking for? Anything you ask for, I'll give you up to anything, up to half of my kingdom. In verse 3, she says, I ask for my life and the lives of my people. And Xerxes is befuddled. He doesn't know what to say. He's, who would ask such a thing? Who would do such a thing? Verse 5. And verse 6, she answers, This wicked Haman. And the king left the tent in a rage. He was so pissed off that he couldn't even speak there. Haman jumps over on the Esther's couch, begging for his life. The king returns and says, Are you even going to assault my wife right here in front of me? The eunuch shows up the servant he shows up and suggests well haman set up a pole to impale mordecai on why not we throw him on it and the king says verse 9 impale him on it after eight haman is dead he's killed and the same day king xerxes gives esther all of haman's property remember he's the second highest in the land he is the highest noble second only to the king. Mordecai was brought before the king. Esther sh says how they're related. The king takes the signet ring off of, which is his stamp of approval, the king's stamp of approval, essentially, and gives it to Mordecai. Esther uh, went to the king again, fell before him. She's telling him about the decree that was sent out that, that you're able to kill all Jews. You can take all their possessions, all their lands. Kill, kill them if you want to. She's asking them for... For that to be reversed well mordecai knows the law of the the persian law as well so and so does king xerxes he says well it can't be reversed in in medial persia you couldn't reverse what the king couldn't even reverse what was put into place so they send out a second decree king xerxes and esther and mordecai get together and all the scribes write out and they write it out exactly as mordecai says they come together they can't reverse the decree, but they send it out to all the 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia, which is a huge, look at the map there. Uh, the Jews not are, are not only kept from certain death there, 
but they're allowed to defend themselves, their family, and their land. The two decrees were sent out back to back, kind of. Uh, the Jews were able to defend themselves and actually overpower their enemies. Mordecai was promoted. His fame grew and spread throughout all the provinces of the area. Um, on the day of the decree, Haman's ten sons were killed there in Susa, along with all the other Jewish enemies. 500 on the first day in Susa. Esther actually goes back to King Xerxes and says, Hey, we need another day. Can we have another day? 300 more were killed there in Susa. And um, this sounds brutal, but similar to the Holocaust, evil people that are just greedy for land and to hurt people and to wipe out a race. Does this sound familiar? These evil people were trying to annihilate an entire race, take their possessions, take their land. God didn't see fit just to give these enemies of the Jews a slap on the wrist. No, he allowed the, the Jews not only to defend themselves, but to wipe out their enemies. 75,000 people were killed over the whole 127, 127 provinces. A festival of Parham was established, which is still uh, celebrated today, almost 2,500 years later. Uh, it was first established in 473 BC by the Jews. It showed that they had relief, they had gained relief from their enemies. And then finally in chapter 10, we see that Mordecai becomes the prime minister with authority next only to that of King Xerxes. May 30th, 2020, and over the past several days, we've had some very ugly events happen in the United States with a overzealous police officer taking the life of a innocent African-American man, George Floyd. And I would, pr I would ask that you would join me in prayer for the family of George Floyd, also the family of the police officer and the police officer himself, that he would be convicted in his heart and justice wise, but in his heart as, as what he what he's done. And I would ask that you would pray for our country, that racial tensions would be soothed, that we could look beyond the color of our skin or where we go to church or not. And that we would just look at each other in love and care for one another and take care of each other. Um, that we would treat people the way Jesus would, would treat people and love people and care for them and look for them to be drawn to God, not to look for ways to hate. So God bless you. Join me in prayer for our country and for racial tensions to soothe. God bless you.